Tom once even ran the headline, scientists say smelling farts might prevent cancer. <laughs> Studies about coffee that claim it may reverse the effects of liver damage, uh, help prevent colon cancer, decrease the risk of uh, endometrial cancer, and increase the risk of miscarriage. Coffee today is like God in the Old Testament. <laughs> it will either save you or kill you, depending on how much you believe in its magic powers. <laughs> Nobody is publishing a study that says nothing up with acai berries. <laughs> and to get those results, there are all sorts of ways that, consciously or not, you can tweak your study. You could alter how long it lasts uh, or make your random sample too small to be reliable. <laughs> P-hacking is very complicated, but it basically means collecting lots of variables and then playing with your data until you find something that counts as statistically significant but is probably meaningless. Even the best designed studies can get flukish results. And the best process that science has to guard against that is the replication study, uh, where other scientists redo your study. <laughs> scientists themselves know not to attach too much significance to individual studies until they're placed in the much larger context of all the work taking place in that field. But too often, a small study with nuanced tentative findings gets blown out of all proportion when it's presented to us the lay public. Chocolate bar could improve blood flow to the placenta and benefit the growth and development of your baby, especially in women at risk for preeclampsia or high blood pressure in pregnancy. Except that's not what the study said. It's like a game of telephone. Some of this is on us, the viewing audience. We like fun, poppy science that we can share like gossip, and TV news producers know it. That is why you constantly hear stuff like this. Men, listen up. A brand new study says a woman is more open to romance when they are full, opposed to being hungry. Okay. <laughs> First of all, no shit. <laughs> Anyone is more open to anything when they aren't hungry. But, but you should know, that study involved only 20 women. And you cannot presume that 20 women can speak for all women. This is science, not the United States Senate. <laughs> and, and then... And then there was this eye-catching report from just last year. A university in England says drinking champagne every week may help delay dementia and Alzheimer's disease. There's a big issue with that study, aside from the fact that if you are celebrating with champagne three times a week, your standards for celebration need to be much higher. <laughs> champagne is acceptable on New Year's, Valentine's, birthdays, and if and when Henry Kissinger dies, and that's it. That is it. That is the full list. But the bigger issue is that study was performed on rats. The real science on oxytocin is more complicated than the term moral molecule suggests. Because while it has been found to enhance positive emotions like bonding and trust, researchers have, have also found that it can enhance negative emotions like envy and bias. So while promising, the science on this is still very much in progress. This is a chart mapping the results of studies of things like coffee, eggs and wine. All of them have been linked to raising or lowering your risk of cancer, depending on the study. And everything causes cancer is not the conclusion you want to draw from science. It's the conclusion you should draw from logging onto WebMD, where that is their motto. Having whole milk mm -hmm. or having whole fat yeah. mm -hmm. dairy products actually can yeah. help you lose weight. I think the, the way to live your life is you find the study that sounds best that to you, you. Yeah. and you go with that. No! No, 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 no! In science, in science, you don't just get to cherry-pick the parts that justify what you were going to do anyway. That's religion. You're thinking of religion. That is what you're thinking of there. And look, this is dangerous.